I've had quite a few calls from people uh, wanting me to shut up and for us to get on with Brexit. That's what we all voted for. What would you say to them? I'd say, what actually did everybody vote for? Do we know and do we know what kind of Brexit and what Brexit means? And that's really part of the problem we've got, which is that lots of people were voting for different reasons. We don't know who voted for what. Mm. We do know what the Leave campaign were promising and that that has not and will not be delivered. So we're a bit stuck to know exactly what millions of people in the country truly want now. I mean, the Brexiteers will phone and have phoned um, and will say, and our text, as I speak, I can see texts coming in, yep. and they'll say, the people voted to leave, in or out, that's what we voted for, let's get on and do it. And they're getting quite angry. And what worries me is that a lot of people are divided, families are divided, friends are dis divided, communities are divided, and if we're not very careful... We are going to harm this country for a long time to come. Sadly, I think Brexit has already done that. But I cannot see how forcing people out of the EU when it may not be what the majority now want will bring us back together. Well, uh, you know, well. If people voted to leave and they still want to leave and we ask people again, you know, this is your option, we you can leave or remain... What do you want? This is the only deal on offer, which is what the Prime Minister tells us. And they tell us they still want to leave. That's fine. But if we don't even check whether that is what people want and we come out, it's an irreversible decision. Once we're out, we'll never come back with the rebate that we've got, with the opt-outs that we've got. We lose so much. And, you know, what are the people who voted to leave so afraid of? How can it be against democracy to just ask them to confirm that given the changing circumstances that we've seen over the last two to three years, this is still what they want? If it is, fine. Yeah, Don't but supposing them. it still splits the country, supposing it is still very nearly 50-50, I mean, maybe it's just reversed the other way and 52% want to remain and 48% want to leave. I mean, we're still going to have a problem. As I say, we have got a problem because that is what Brexit has already done. Brexit has broken many aspects of Britain, but we're not going to put it back together again by forcing particularly a hard Brexit on a population which did not in any way vote clearly one way or another. There was a small majority one way, and the majority was definitely not voting for no deal. So to say that 17.4 million people would have voted for no deal, I think is absolutely indefensible. And, and to say that, oh, well, tough luck, you voted leave, it wasn't what we told you it was going to be, but you've got to suck it up anyway, I, I think is not the way Britain would normally behave. You know, respect people, say to them, look, but the ones, who are, the, ones who are, the ones who are shouting loudest, Ross, are the ones who are saying, look, we just wanted to leave. That's what we want to do. We don't care about the consequences. We just want to leave, and that should be respected. And those are the people who are shouting loudest at the moment. That's true, but that isn't the way you run a democracy. Just because people shout loudly or threaten violence or whatever it is is not a reason to say, well, we've got to do what they say. Actually, the democratic way is to have a measured and considered response which says, well, we cannot be sure that what the British people voted for is what is actually happening now. Things have changed. They are different from the uh, campaigns, either in the referendum or indeed in the general election. And therefore, democracy is requiring us to just show enough respect to the British people to ask them to confirm their vote and tell us what their view is now. And people who say that everyone else must be denied the chance to change their mind does not really respect democracy. David Davis himself said in 2012, a democracy isn't a democracy if you can't change your mind. Mm. Would you be happy with a general election? Would that sort the problem out for you? 
I'm not convinced that a general election would sort anything out, to be honest. This is a particular issue about Brexit. And the Labour Party has, has said all sorts of things, in, in, you know, depending on the day of the week and which, which party spokesman is speaking. They cover all the bases, but that doesn't actually drive us forward to a, a, an understanding of what the British people want. You know, a general election might be needed, but is not something that I think would solve the Brexit situation because we don't have general elections on single topics. How would you, fe single topic. How would so. you feel if the deal that has been negotiated at the moment that everybody's arguing about uh, was agreed on and we went to Brexit that way? How would you feel about that? I still think it would be the appropriate thing to actually go back to the British people. And I'll tell you why. Because what has been negotiated is not a deal. It's not a future relationship. We've got no idea. We come out, but we've no idea where we're going. So we're sort of dangling in midair. We've not nothing changing. I mean, so, you know, it wouldn't be terribly disruptive. It wouldn't be like, like chaos of, of no deal. But it would just leave us hanging in limbo, waiting to see what we finally managed to agree with the EU by the end of 2020. Let me read. We have no idea what it will be. Let me read this text to you from Fiona, who says, uh, James, I have huge faith in the next generation to get things right. I have a 26 year old daughter and a 23 year old son who both voted leave. They are both intelligent and informed. They believe in immigration and freedom of choice. They don't believe in a supernational, unelected, dictatorial, political construct running our lives. I know that you keep asking people to tell you what benefit we get from leaving, but what do we get from staying apart from the status quo? I lived in the southeast for 30 years and then returned to my home in the northeast. The status quo up here is completely different and people want change. I can't call in as I've had dental work. OK, um, sorry about that, Fiona. What do you think about that, Russ? Well, it's, I, I'm really not quite clear what, what Fiona is quite saying or what she expects to be happening as a result of, of Brexit. I can't see the problems that we have in our country being solved by Brexit because they're not caused by being members of the EU. Indeed, many of the issues that we face will be worse as a result of leaving the EU. You know, our social care crisis, for example, is not going to be improved by leaving the EU. The housing crisis has nothing to do with being members of the EU and leaving it won't improve that either. So, you know, there are lots of areas in which Unfortunately, governments in the past have failed to explain to the British people all the protection and security and benefits we do have from being part of a much bigger partnership, a bigger cooperation. But our, uh, you know, our governments never have really bought into the whole EU thing. I think, I don't know whether it was you and I discussed this before, but... Um, we don't have any plaques up on places where EU have uh, have given... Uh, money for infrastructure. We don't know yeah. the names of our MEPs. Now, I blame the MEPs, I mean, apart from Nigel, uh, who proved <laughs> how useful an MEP can be. I mean, if, if a lot more had taken uh, uh, Nigel's uh, way, we might have got a lot more done. I mean, most of us could name maybe two or three. I think I can name three MEPs, and one of those is Nigel Farage. Um, how on earth have we managed to survive 40 years with not taking any interest in it? James, you, you are so right. And it, 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 it's a real travesty, actually. But in political terms, I guess it is sort of understandable because any of the good things that Europe has delivered to us, our politicians want to take the credit for. And anything that goes wrong they would like to blame on the EU. And that's exactly what's happened. It's not just actually in our country, it's happened in other countries mm. too. But, you know, for example, in, in Wales, when farmers get huge sums of money from the EU, the cheques that they receive come from the Welsh government or the British government. There's no mention of the fact that actually that money has come from the EU. 
And it's the same, as you say, with you know, big infrastructure projects, which the EU will fund, or scientific mm. research projects. It's not clear to people that actually that money has come to us because we're members of the EU. Our, our nuclear safeguards, you know, that is something that we have chosen to lead, and we are going to have to recreate ourselves as one country when actually we were members of a group funded by 27 different countries, uh, and we are leaving that the same with the medicines agency. You know, our, our medical research and safeguards were under the auspices of a, a, an international agency run by the EU, which we were part of, which we're now leaving, and we've got to recreate all these things that we've built up ourselves over the last 40 years as major members of the EU.